What's up, cheaters? Welcome to the Cheat Day Show, a show founded by Chef Carl Ruiz and comedian Ryan Reese. We are here at La Cubana in the Meatpacking District on 9th and 15th, like we are every week, uh, where we're going to meet comedians, athletes, models, authors, all around interesting people, and discuss their eating habits and their cheating habits. Uh, to my left today, uh, I am joined by executive chef Mario Chepe, a man who is handpicked uh, to be the chef de cuisine under Carl Ruiz here at La Cubana. He worked with him for over 10 years. Uh, we're honored to have you with us. Hey, it's an honor to be here, Ryan. Just uh, glad Chef left me this restaurant, huh? It's pretty cool. You don't always get a restaurant left, do you? No. But uh, I'm excited for that. My grandmother just left us, like, um, not enough money to get Chinese food in her honor. There was some discrepancy. There was, like, 10 people, <laughs> 60 bucks. That's what Rosalind Schneider left to all of us. That, so, yeah, this is good. That, that voice you're hearing is a fantastic comedian. She's our guest today. She's a national touring headlining comedian and actress with multiple specials on Comedy Central, appearances on HBO, Cartoon Network, The View. Uh, she's been in video games, uh, Grand Theft Auto. And uh, you can see her on Amazon and Netflix. Give it up for Rachel Feinstein, everybody. Thank you. Ryan Reese and all you fellas. Just really glad to be part of all of this. And uh, I wish I could believe those things about myself. That's my goal today. To feel good? Just to feel good. Yeah. That's the whole show. It's all, so we like, we like to go. We, oh, and we also got uh, Lance Weiss over here, our engineer. And we got uh, Jason Schneider to my right. <laughs> He's helping us out. And uh, basically, uh, we like to start off just talking. Did anyone have any interesting meals, any cheat meals this week? Do you do anything? You start. It's like by default because I'm the chef at the table. So we had, uh, I have a cheat meal every like six hours. I could try to, try to keep up with myself. Um, well, give I us one. What did you do? From this last week, uh, we had the New York City Food and Wine Festival. So uh, we had some um, some killer barbecue guys on Saturday, burger competition on Friday, and uh, my cheat meal this week was octopus. Yeah, it was fucking delicious. How was it prepared? It was smoked in chimichurri sauce mm. and finished over some coals. Fuck yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> it was like butter. It was like <laughs> butter. You know, it's it's one of those things that you don't get all the time. A burger, you can always have a burger. A good steak, you can always get sure. a good steak with some fucking You octopus. know what? You're worth it. It was amazing. You're worth it. There you go. Where'd you get the octopus from? Ryan, the fucking water. Comes from the, the, the water, cool. It came from the water. It comes from the water. <laughs> I can't tell you that. That type of octopus, <laughs> look, was smuggled in. All right? The, you no, can't, you can't find a, out everything that happens here at Kuban. Fulton. You know, everything comes from, um, from, from Fulton Street. Fulton Fish Market? Yeah, from the fish market. So we brought it in on, uh, I want to say Tuesday or Wednesday, and just brined the heck out of it. And What's brining? Brining is the process of breaking down fats and tendons in a meat. You kind of massage yeah. the meat, right? Yeah. You give it a bit of a hand job, if well, you will. Well, you give it you give it a hand job, and then you put it like in a in a jacuzzi of aromatics and love, and it just kind of cooks in there and gets soft and starts to break. This is down. the same lyrics for the slow jam Ryan's writing. Uh, no, I'm just saying, like, uh, it sounds. Yeah, you get a massage and a jacuzzi. Yeah. Those steps sound backwards. Octopus. Usually, to a jacuzzi first, and then the rub. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you got to get rubbed twice. Look, he does the same thing. <laughs> It's all his, his well-oiled bitches. I hope you don't mind if oh, I speak for them rub. today. Oh, yeah. yeah. They get the same sorts of rubs down, rub downs that he gives to Do they come from when the he brines me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's where you pick up chicks. That's what I've heard. I know a lot about you. <laughs> That's why I like to spend my free time, Rachel, yeah. right after sets. I go down to the Fulton. I did some yeah. cheating. What'd you do? You didn't think I good? mean, all I do is cheat, really. Again, there's no basic rules. But I bought my father-in-law some fudge at Lake George. He loves some fudge, but I can't buy people things like that because then I eat it. I slammed it all right in my dumb face. Mm -hmm. There's no fudge left for Papa Joe. So it didn't make the trip back didn't from Lake make George. The, no, it just it, no. It late at night, like like you know how you're supposed to like save your wedding cake for the year. Did you do? You're, yeah, you're supposed to freeze it. It's good luck. Did yeah, you know that? Does anyone know this? It sits in the freezer. Yeah, so you're supposed to you know freeze your wedding cake. So we froze ours, but then I just eat it late at night and. By the time a year was up, it was just like this sad sort of sliver, just this shame gnarled of bit of like hardly off. any icing. Yeah. yeah, there was nothing to be. It was disgusting. But yeah, I can't control myself with sweets. I can't have them. I in the house, I slam them right in my dumb dumb. What's face. your favorite sweet? I love cupcakes. Uh, hey, cake. What, cupcakes what about donuts? Ice cream. 
brownies, donuts. Oh, there's this place called Peter Pan Donuts in Brooklyn that they make homemade. They make the dough right there, and it's it's real good. Yeah. Can I tell you about a donut I had? You ever eat at the uh, donut, yes, Poppy. the donut pub? <laughs> yes, oh, yes. I had one this week. I don't think I, I had one years ago, but not even you know the donut pub. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. had a Brooklyn cream. Uh, I guess it's vanilla. It's like a Boston cream, but vanilla on the inside. Mm-hmm. I literally, when I got, I had vanilla on the top, and when I when they gave it to me, it was heavy, and I was like, "Oh, oh my that's how you know gosh!" It was done right. And then I, it, it yes. was so much filling. It, I'm, I might, I was gonna get one yesterday, but I did not. But I might get one today. Yes, because nice we're, we're not that right. far. It was incredible. I'm a sweet person too. Lake George, yeah. a lot of fudge up there. A lot of fudge in Lake yeah. George. Video game, yeah. like a lot of uh, arcade. Uh, what do they call those things? Like uh. There's like arcades, like a bunch of uh, fun where you go play little games and skee ball, and yeah. then a lot of like, and then the fudge shops. I lo- yeah, and I, and I, I I used to have roommates, and I would eat their food. That was my move, and then I would replace it, and then I would eat the food I I replaced. Um, done that many a time. That's uh, it's called the old Feinstein. Would you replace <laughs> it with more? I would go get like you know my roommate would like like a specific type of dark chocolate or something, and then I just hate be- people like this. Like she would eat a little piece yeah. at a time. I'm like, just eat the goddamn bar. Now yeah. you're just being hostile. It's mm-hmm. abusive. Yeah. I would I used to walk to the Y to get like something from the machine with my girlfriend, and she would get like one little pack of cookies. I get mine, slam my dumb face, they're gone, and then she would like you know kind of maybe have one or half of one and curl up the top of the package. Oh, that you know, is the yeah, you're worst. you're that a selfish. Worst. Skank, right? It's Do wrong. Not slowly <laughs> eat your sweets in oh front of a, anybody at yeah. all. I uh, I dated. Uh, I mean, I, I I can't imagine. I hear women do these things like uh, they ruin food. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, explain. Uh, okay, so like they'll buy something and they know they can't control themselves. So like they'll uh, put. Uh, they put it in the garbage, but they know they might go in the garbage to go after the cookies. Oh, so yeah, they'll it. put dish detergent on the yes. cookies, mm-hmm. so you're yes. ruining the food, so you don't eat it. Like yes. you know, I've done this. Gar- yes. Being in the garbage is not going to stop me. No, <laughs> but dish me neither. soap might. Neither does water. I've done water too, but I'll I'll take a wet cookie off yeah, the top see, of the garbage. Water, yeah, water doesn't have the same effect as like no. a dirty napkin or something. Yeah, it needs will, to be I something eat rancid. Wet food. Oh man, I'm yeah. uh, I, well. I used to be 300 pounds. I'm a, I'm I'm a. I still like once I go, I go. Like there's no there's no starting yeah. to stop. And so and once he goes, I leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did. Uh, I did some Outback yesterday. Outback Steakhouse. Nice, blooming onion or no no we went with the wings. Go? Okay, twenty third street wings. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then we did the 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 shrimp the shrimp and lobster fried with like some sort of jalapenos. Oh, that's good. That was real good. Caesar salad and then uh, the steak, baked potato. And then uh, I was with uh, Allie, and I ate her leftovers. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. I love some leftovers, too. And then, because the night isn't over, because I'm still awake, I went to McDonald's at 2 a.m. <laughs> Do you know, I was standing outside of McDonald's here on 14th Street. Love McDonald's. And uh, 6th Avenue. And I hadn't had McDonald's in years. Best and I, ice cream ever. They do a very tasty ice cream. Best I was standing outside the McDonald's, and, and I was, like, thinking... You know, you don't need this. And I wanted a double cheeseburger. I was like, I haven't gone to McDonald's in years. Like, I never go to fast food. And this guy walked up towards me, kind of not all the way homeless, like Mm homelish, you know. And he just walked up to me and he goes, come on, baby. You know you want a double cheeseburger. (laughs) And he knew what I wanted. Like, was he God? He goes, just get it for yourself, baby. Stop struggling, staring, thinking about it too much. Just get your double cheeseburger. I still can't stop thinking about it. I'm like, how did he know exactly what I happened to want? That was your soul, man. And you got it or no? I did. You did. It was too weird. Uh Yeah. I was like, is that God and Jesus all in one man? <laughs> telling me. He's like, come on, baby. I got to try that approach. There. I've been going about things all wrong. Yeah. I just got to look at a girl and be like, you earned it. Get that whopper. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about Rachel is, uh, and it, it, I hope you don't mind me sharing this story. You can share anything. Okay. okay. Yeah, so she was filming something last week at the Comedy Cellar for a documentary. <laughs> and uh, like any other comedian would be like wildly nervous about going on stage and then yet alone having three cameras in the room filming, right? So I, I see her and she's just, just, banging wings down and I'm like you're next <laughs> and she's like uh, uh, I'm just gonna finish this wing and I'm like you're literally going on stage and you got a bone in your mouth yeah. I love wings I mean, yeah. that was great I was you like this she's a hero can't say no to wings she's you a hero say no to I wings. think about wings like a nice fat plate of wings or the kind of barbecue that's like served on paper you know the more I have no information so tell me if I'm right because you're a chef but the more I feel like with barbecue, the more disrespectfully it's served, the better it is. Like if it's served 100%. by just some woman in like a dirty hairnet when just throws the plate at you, just yeah, the well, meat's I mean, right? Like psychologically, anything that you're eating with your hands that's going actually into your mouth yeah. is way better than something you're eating with a fork or a knife. Really? 
all the time. Oh, all the time. Okay. Well, and those barbecue are... places, like you find, you know, like like the, the good shit that somebody tells you, this is the place the tourists go, but this is the place place. Yeah. It's always just well, they throw the a plate at you. If you walk into a barbecue place and the place is like, you know, sparkling clean, you're yeah. not in a barbecue place. You walk in and there's, you know, an old lady behind the counter covered with a bunch of barbecue sauce. Floors look like they haven't been cleaned in like eight months. Then this is a pit house. This is where people are working. Where you do you know? like to get barbecue? Um, my go-to spot is number one barbecue in the country. It's hometown. Really? Where is that? Yeah, Where's hometown that? In, in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Mm. Yeah, these guys, um, they're Michelin star candidates, James Beard award winning wow. for barbecue. For barbecue. That's, that's I've eaten there a few times. Yeah. It's, it's out there by the Ikea, kind of. It's definitely by the Ikea. Yeah, there's uh, always a huge line. It's like 45 minutes. By, by the Ikea. Lance yeah. is in a serious relationship. <laughs> Lance is in a serious relationship. He's got a lot he of time the, on his hands. A lot of time at the Ikea. <laughs> How many Allen keys uh-huh. do you have at home? Yeah, there a was a sadness to <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Hey, I, mean, I spend my Saturdays there. We're yeah. doing okay. Ikea is not good, but it's not bad. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we get the barbecue sometimes. No, but listen, hometown, um, hometown in Red Hook is... Um, on, uh, Billy Durney has been, been rocking and rolling there for... A little over ten years now, and and they're just making some of the best barbecue you get your hands on. Now, what's your is that your go to when you want something like to satiate? Like, what's your go to? Like, I'm a meat guy. I know Rachel's a sweet guy. My go to, yeah, my go to is beef brisket. Brisket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Jews, Jews make a lot of brisket. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My mom made brisket. It's like a it's like a soothing comfort food for Jews. It's different though than the the, the brisket that's made by Jewish people is different than uh, like brisket at like a barbecue joint. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yours yeah, is probably well, better. Well, I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's smoked. Actually, there's a great uh, kosher barbecue guy um, here in the city called Wandering Q. Oh really? That makes some of the best uh, best fucking brisket you can have. Where? What restaurant? Is that the uh, name so of the he, restaurant? He does. It's not. He does pop ups and you know you guys do the bar mitzvahs oh, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. He does solely that. Um, but man, it's a it's a great great freaking brisket. Rachel, you feel Jewish? No, actually, my it's funny. I said my mom cooks brisket. She converted, but she was Christian. But usually, it's the she converts. couldn't get the brisket right. She was like, "I'm just gonna." She's pretty good, but usually they're the ones that are more into the Jew thing than my like. My dad didn't even care if she converted, but she she'll be like, you know, somebody would come by our house and like proselytize, like a. Jehovah's Witness would come by, and my mom used to go, this is a Jewish home. We don't believe in the <laughs> <laughs> And then she would tap on what's called a mezuzah, which is a little Israeli, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah, in your doorway, and she would go, this is a mashugana. And my father would be like, no, it's mezuzah, Karen. Like, yeah, she's, she's a white Protestant, but, but she learned how to cook good Jew food. But yeah. And she's, yeah. Lear- and she's learning Yiddish? Yes, and she learns Yiddish. She goes, oi, gavalt, but you, she just sounds like such a Midwesterner. Do you eat a lot of Chinese food? I don't eat a ton of Chinese food. I like Korean food a lot. Love Korean. I did this military tour in Korea for like three weeks. They they serve really, I feel like a lot of Korean food is like super fresh. There's a lot of healthy stuff in it. Not too greasy, but good spices. I love Korean food. Yeah, Korean food is uh, Korean barbecue. probably the cleanest, you know, kind of Asian food you can have out there because it's... I keep Very getting happy when I'm right because I feel like you're going to know whether I'm correct about anything I said. Like I, I just you can't be wrong when you're talking about food and how you feel about it, right? Like if you feel like you love a certain type of food, that's 100% how right, you feel. but I was yeah. right that it's not greasy because it doesn't taste greasy. No, to me. it's not greasy. They they're like the um it's good. they're like the I, I like greasy. The Sumford home style food, you know. Yeah, but it's good though. You you that like Korean good, food, yeah. right? And Korean I've, barbecue I've had tasty. Korean barbecue in Midtown, right? That's where they have the uh they're like on like 34th Street, like uh yeah, there's yep. like a whole bunch of Korean places. And I, I love there. when they smack an egg in something that you wouldn't think there'd be egg with, you know, like a burger with some egg or barbecue with yeah, egg. Yeah, I feel like yeah. you put an egg on almost everything and you're all right with it. Yeah. So have that yolk kind of explode all over it. Yeah. I like Chinese food, though. I'm a big fan. Ari, yeah. what's your go-to uh, Chinese... Beef and broccoli. Chinese combo. Is that white rice or fried oh, yeah. rice? What white rice. Yeah. No fried. Yeah. White rice, beef and broccoli, uh, chicken and broccoli, Yeah. spare ribs. What did your What did your moms cook when you were kids that you that was, like, soothing? Was there any, like, comfort food you related? You, meatloaf. You remember what? Me- meatloaf, really? Yeah, meatloaf. That's a very comforting food. You can load it up with ketchup or, or tomato sauce. It sounds yeah. so rancid to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Georgia. It's the South. So it's but like, it's like meatloaf, good meatloaf, yeah. mashed potatoes, uh, like green beans, like a you know, hearty mm-hmm. meal. Because then that you know why it's comfort food? Because that puts you to sleep. A big heavy meal like that, yeah. just, it comatoses you, and then you just take a nap. That Rach, makes sense. Rach, why do you carry food in your purse? Well, because I, I bring snacks around because because I can't control myself if there's like a plate of food at a party. 
You know, whatever rules I go into the day with is once there. <laughs> once I'm at somebody's house and there's like a yeah, any any table of food and. I just, yeah, again, slam it right, right in my dumb face. So I just bring little healthier things so that I don't get as hungry, like seaweed snacks and stuff like that. Uh, it's amazing because you're in very good shape, but you're also Thanks. married to a New York City fireman. And I happen to know those people eat. They eat a lot. Oh, yeah. He eats everything. Like, yeah, yeah. But like even every time they have an event at a firehouse, because we've certainly played enough firehouses, mm -hmm. the buffet is ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane. My husband will eat like two dinners in a row. Like he eats a wild amount, you know, because they also work a lot. And they burn oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. But you're around it all the time and it doesn't affect you. And no, it is really hard for me. That's why I bring stuff with me. Like I just bring like dumb stuff. Yeah. Again, like seaweed snacks or bars or stuff. What's in your bag now? Because I've already eaten all my snacks. Today. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make but it very that, far, Rachel. That's my cue to run upstairs to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to take care of your... Uh, He's gonna make sure we prepare your cheat meal there, Rachel. So we'll just we'll just keep chatting for a second. Uh, what is this coffee and yogurt and Cheerios? Well, you asked if there's any weird combination I made up, or I, I when I was a little kid, and I had a bad dream for some reason. I used to have bad dreams a lot, and I'd get up in the middle of the night and I would make coffee yogurt with Cheerios in it, and that's just what I ate to soothe myself after a bad dream. I'm not I'm not trying to say I'm not trying to get that out there. I'm not trying to start any trends. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out where Do your you, parents were but, while you're making. <laughs> Coffee, have, yogurt, and Cheerios uh, uh, at 3 a.m. I don't, they, I think they'd had it with me climbing into their bed. So they're, you know, and my mom once tried to, she knew I liked coffee, yogurt, and she was like, I'll put Cheerios on top of it. And then I started doing it for myself. I would just walk in the kitchen and sit there after my dreams, my weird bad dreams. Do you have bad dreams now? Now and again, yeah, I do. I have the same, like, similar ones. I mean, they're kind of hacky. Yeah. Dream that I d didn't get out of high school. Cause I mean, it was pretty close with me. It was D's and F's. So it was, I dream that like they found out I didn't pass something and I'm still back in high school. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, that's like, but everybody has that dream. I wish my dreams were more original. Do you have that one? I, uh, mine is uh, college. Yeah. But I've, I've, uh, I've, I've forgotten and I haven't gone to a whole semester <laughs> of math <laughs> or science. Well, thank God like, I never oh, no. got into college, so I won't have that dream. There was not even a threat of me attending college. So Now, you're recently married, but I am mm -hmm. curious because you were single for a while. When you went on dates with guys, did you eat? Would you eat in front oh, of Oh, that's a, a good one. Yeah, I eat. I mean, a lot of my friends would be nervous, but you would eat that in front of a guy. But uh, to me, I've usually gotten positive feedback eating in front of guys. Yeah, you know, I would be they, upset if a girl didn't eat. Yeah. I'm like, Dude, come on, we're paying for this. I've we got that. a nice a, a time. Yeah, you're a human. Yeah. I know you're hungry. I've had that. I went on a date with a girl, and I was like, this is so weird, because I, I, I ate, and uh, she... Eat? No, no. It was Anthony Bourdain's old restaurant on the uh, east side. It's like a, Fren a French like steakhouse. Yeah. She didn't eat anything. Nothing. And I was like, do you want the bags? And she's like, no. And I'm like, do you know why I, it's bad? Can I bag it? You know why it's bad on a relationship? Because it's a, it's a lie right up top. It's like, you're a human being. You got to eat. And we're at a nice place. You want to eat. So you're lying to me not by not eating. It's oh, just yeah. Well, I mean, mood. she had eight vodka sodas. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was fine. She was she was cool with that in front of me. But like the chicken, she was like, no, I'm delicate. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I usually find I get positive feedback if I eat a lot at a date. So it feels like it's a good, it's a good activity. I'll order the pasta or a burger and not try to get, like, the delicate thing. Because I, I feel like I usually get compliments from what's that. What's a bad date if food? If I do some good face stuffing on a date. What's that? What's a bad date food? Like, what's something you shouldn't? I mean, I guess there's things that are a little Grass. tricky. Like, oh. <laughs> Like wings. I mean, you uh, want to be the able second, to. Second time we've heard wings is yeah. bad. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. Um. um Actually, I guess nuts aren't messy. Nuts would be safe, but there'd be a sadness to only eating nuts on a date. But one of the first dates I went on with my husband, I, I had wings at, at this bar. And then um, you, you ever think somebody's about to compliment you? Like you're kind of opening up your body language to receive a compliment. And then he was just <laughs> like, you you have a lot of, um, <laughs> of ranch sauce on your... <laughs> Like kind of left tit. I don't think he put it that way, but yeah. It just fell down from eating this. Yeah, wings. he was just like he. I thought he was gonna like lift my chin up and be like, "You're quite pretty." And he was like, "Yeah, you got a lot of ranch sauce right there. It's been there for a while." But. And then you knew he was the one. And that's what I knew. That's what yeah. you knew. <laughs> but I'm kind of slovenly. I often have like a stain on myself. I'm not a neat eater. You look neat. You look very put together. Thank you. You I present usually... well. Thanks, Ryan. It's a good thing. I'll take it. 
I, I go tapas. That's where I, if I if I do have a date, which not often tapas. But tapas makes me nervous because then you you always I always feel like I'm eating too much. What do you feel about tapas? I feel it's 140 dollars and I'm still hungry. Yeah, yeah but, it's, <laughs> but it's like it's small enough that you're like, all right. So neither one of us looks like uh, we ate too much, and like yeah, who knows where the night may go? You don't <laughs> you don't want to be like yeah. oh god, I'm full. Yeah, tapas makes me a little anxious because I always feel like I'm taking too much. In theory, I, I believe in it. Um, and the food itself is good. But, yeah, I'm hungry. Are those first dates you're going on for food? Okay. I would never do food for I a always first do date. Food. I always do food. Really? Yeah. I'm not sitting across from on It's dude, terrifying. Wait, why don't you just get a drink because then it's over? I'm going for That's a walk. That's what I'm saying. But, like, if it's a night out, if I'm taking a night off and we're doing something, let's do something. If I think you're worth going on a date, then I want to spend some time with you. I don't, we can have a drink and spend 20 minutes with me and you can go to your next Tinder date. Come on. What well, is that? That's nice. What is that? That's how I would do it. What is that? Yeah. I got to get to McDonald's at 2 a.m. I'll give you this. I just like a drink when I would d- date because I would just be so nervous. And then I just, yeah. Yeah. I'm so nervous. I go on walks. Walk. Here's the best thing you do walk at 2 p.m. in the middle of the day. That way, who you're going with is like a central location. It's safe. It's easy. And then a walk, if you go, hey, want to pop and get a coffee? Want to pop and get a tea? And then if it sucks, you go, well, this was great knowing you. Or if it's great, you can keep walking. And then you can go in there. You can play video games. You can go get food. They, they can go 20 <laughs> minutes or it can go eight hours. But you could be done after 20 minutes. And it costs you two two seventy five to buy someone a coffee. That's exactly what I think. So, if somebody wanted uh, to take me on a walk. Oh but that, that I would be like, so Lance doesn't experience. have a job. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But then you know, dude, to sit across from someone Uh-oh. like eye contact. And here don't comes know. your cheat meal, Rachel. Time to oh cheat. My God, we get to eat while we're on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a lot what of food. Oh my All right, all right. This is my favorite part of the podcast. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get some photos here before. Oh, good. Well, I'll take photos of that one. That one's yours. Wow. Oh my oh gosh. That looks awesome. Oh my god, this looks so good! I love macaroni and cheese. Okay, so well, well, uh, did you he tell make us this because you t- put it down? Well, he read your he read your I sheet. Aww, make you happy. Thank you. So, uh, we had asked Rachel, um, what are her go tos? What are her cheats? What does she like? Uh, and uh, she basically said uh, she loved macaroni and cheese, pizza, fat plate of pasta, really anything but bugs. <laughs> which I uh, did you eat a bug once? I don't know what happened. So no, do you wanna... people are always like, would you eat anything? Yeah, oh, generally I tr- I try everything, but no, I don't feel like crunching on a spider or yeah. something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what are we eating here? Uh, We're eating uh, lobster mac and cheese. Yeah. Oh my god, this looks so good. Are you a seafood person, Rachel? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I love seafood. Love crabs. I'm not really good at like. Getting crabs ready, like I'd rather somebody else do the do the labor yeah. part. Yeah. That's so I have a job. But I love some butter sauce. Yes. <laughs> this looks awesome. So what are uh, to, to just describe this to our listeners? What so kind of noodles having, are there? Um, elbow macaroni, because what other noodle is there in mac and cheese? Uh, mm. Some fresh lobster, so good. Parmesan cheese, cheddar cheese, um, some heavy cream for the creaminess behind it all. You can smell the sharpness of the cheese coming coming right off of it. And uh, upstairs we have a pizza oven, so it gets up to 600 and some degrees. I'm a big fan of the top looking at it with that golden crust. Yeah, Lance. Well, that's the best part of mac and cheese. You, you know, well, so you, that's a southern food, I like food how he too, gets right? annoyed at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, would you teach this no, idiot? Tell him what? Yeah, let him know. That is let the mac know, and you cheese. dummy. That's the best really, part. He'd had it with your shit at that moment. Like, hey, oh, Lance, it's time for one of those walks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, no. this is southern food, mac and cheese? Uh, yeah, I'm from Georgia. Yeah, mac, for sure, macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Absolutely. I had a lot growing up. Did your I mean, your mom make you like mac and cheese? Or Everyone made mac and cheese. Yeah. yeah, I went home to Georgia two weeks ago. We had all kinds of casseroles, sweet potato things. Yeah, it's, it's uh, vegetables are pretty big. I don't know if you had any you food. In your house that you weren't allowed, or food growing up that you weren't allowed to eat. But in my family, my mom was always in some weird diet, and we weren't allowed to have sweets, so that it just made me obsessed with that food. Sweets and soda. So even now, I know you soda's soda terrible now, for you. I try not to, but I love a Coke mm. because I wasn't allowed to have one sure. as a kid. Oh, so Coca-Cola is so good. It's just satisfying. It's so good. Me and my sister's... Uh, we didn't. We didn't grow up with money, so my father would get us one can of soda, and we have to share it. Uh-huh. So now, Where'd so you now, up, Brian Queens. So okay. now, now I'm like, uh, now when I go somewhere, I'm like, I need two sodas. Oh, two sodas. <laughs> like it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't. Popping I'm getting sodas. a refill. Popping I want a sodas. refill. That's it. That's no, but it. that yeah, that makes sense though because you were told you could yeah. So you, it's like your safety thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I need it. 
Yeah. Yeah. We had to go to toy traders when I was a kid. So if we ever had, uh, if we wanted a new toy, we had to choose one of our old toys and like to trade in. It was so sad. It was like the Sophie's Choice of toys. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why I brought it to a you Holocaust just re- Yeah, But you did, you yeah. did really just raise <laughs> really the, the level reference. of this podcast. We're um, sitting here like, <laughs> we like to eat. And she's like, Sophie's Choice, Meryl Streep. <laughs> Film about the Holocaust. Wait, I want to go back to the uh, mac and cheese. Rachel, what it, how's it, what's it tasting like? To it's your average so mac good. and cheese. Wait, when was the last time you had mac and cheese? Um, It's been a while. It's been like, a, I don't know, probably like at least a month or two or something yeah. like that. A couple months maybe. Can, how, can you taste the lobster? Yeah, it's so tasty. This is so good. I mean, I do feel bad because I was trying to get it back together because this has been a pretty disgusting week. I mean, I've eaten a lot, but it's so good. It's so good. Do you make it here? Oh, good. I, it's, I, I make it for you here. This was oh, this you, for you. Yes, this it was. was um, it, it was your cheat meal, you know. So mm-hmm. I was. Listen, I love eating mac and cheese. So any excuse I have to make mac and cheese, I'm <laughs> like all about it. So I've been plotting this mac and cheese for like a couple of days. Like I can't oh, wait. Awesome. Can't wait to get Where's this mac the, and cheese. The game lobster going. from? Did you say that? Uh, from the water. <laughs> is is lo- is there? Where, Did he know he the octopus? Like it when you ask no, him that. no. Where do the mean, lobsters the mainly come from? That's a disrespectful question. Where he's Maine, from? I have so no idea where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> Never ask somebody where their lobster is from. Don't ask me about my lobster land. That's where like the, saying your mother's a whore. It's just wh- very disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> where are the good lobsters from? Uh, the good lobsters are from Maine. Maine is yeah, the, the best cold, lobsters. Yeah, cold water. Aren't they also from? I remember I used to go. To, I, I went to maybe well, I, I didn't used to. I went once, I think, to the Bahamas. They got lobsters. I think we went looking for lobsters. They do have under lobsters. rocks and lobsters stuff. Lobsters down there are like freaking goldfish, like chicken wings up here. They're all over the place. But Maine is better. Maine is better because it's the cold water lobster. Okay. You know, so the lobsters are, are not going to move around as much. Their meat's going to yeah. be a little sweeter. They're going to get a little bigger. What about on the West Coast, like Alaska? They got lobsters over there. They, I, I've never had a West Coast lobster. But Maine, Maine is the main. That's Maine, a lobster. Maine yeah. is the go-to place. After that, you can get down to the Caribbean for some lobsters. Hmm. I mean, but they they grow a lot larger down in the Caribbean. But how different is that? I mean, the temperature Caribbean versus Maine that's got to be wildly different. Like they 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 got to like I would assume they taste way different. Well, that that gives you the kind of variation in the lobster. It's the difference yeah. between a sweet meat and something kind of a little saltier, a little chunkier. Yeah, you know, and a different size lobster. Hmm. Now, uh, I'm going to start Carly making lobster. Us. I only make salmon at home. Yeah. Oh, you, well, that's the safe. It's the chicken of the sea, right? So it's like the, the, the safest thing that you can make. I like salmon. Yeah, with salmon, I make it with black garlic. And then I, I'll, um, I'll make a spinach and, um, yeah, and a little bit of ghee. And then um, ginger. Put a lot of ginger mm. in there. Yeah, and then some soy sauce. Sounds I don't good. know if that's respectable or not. And some salt and pepper, but yeah. That, that can make a menu. That can make a menu. Really? Yeah. <sighs> Salmon, black mean. garlic, you can't go wrong with that. I think you're going to have to share like that recipe garlic. with us so we can put it on our, uh, our site, your uh, <laughs> your salmon recipe. I make, I make pretty good salmon. I can make mm-hmm. like a couple things that are pretty well, but I, I've been cooking more and more lately. Is that because you're married? Is that like a thing? Or is that a money thing? Or Also, Schumer's husband is a yeah. chef, so he gave me... Um, he gave me a cookbook that, and so I've been trying to make some oh, of the recipes cool. from there. Like he gave me a couple of really good cookbooks and I'll just go over there and I'll ask him how to make something, you know, I'll be like, I want to make yeah. this, but what's a different way I could do it. You know, do you get a full recipe? Yeah. Or he'll give me some tips. It's always like, you know, you could throw this and that, you know, cause chefs, yeah, they improvise a lot, a, right? It's a weird thing. So like, you know, I, I grew up cooking, but even, even now and again, I'll call grandma or call my mom and really, yeah, all oh, the time. Awesome. Well, I, I, I fell in love with cooking cause I found that I can eat as much as I want. I can literally <laughs> cook what I want to eat, you know? And so I'll call my mom up and ask her for a recipe to this, uh, you know, to a soup that she might make. And she'll mm-hmm. list maybe 70% of the ingredients and then give me about 40% of the cooking process. <laughs> and the rest is just like up to up to the gods, you know? Let's see how it comes out. But that's, that's kind of how you get a good recipe. Yeah. Is you don't get the whole thing. You get a couple of tips, and then you got to watch the person make it, and then you go and make it again, and it's a process. See, my husband, they cook a lot for the firehouse, and firemen can oh, all cook, because right? they have to cook for nice. a large amount of people, you know? So he's really into cooking, but the thing is, I didn't cook in the beginning that much, because he uses um, cast iron, and I was always, like, doing something wrong. There's just very specific rules, so I just felt like I was always in trouble when I was cooking. 
So he's like, you can't put soap on cast iron and shit yeah, like that. I yeah. can't remember all that. It's too much. I just need to be able to throw something in the dishwasher. So I got my own set of stuff, and now I feel like I don't have to like hear his nagging. And no, then, the cast and, iron yeah. is awesome, though, right? Yeah, it's great. I know, but I can't always remember not to like put soap. I'm always in trouble when I use cast just iron. Use yeah, out. yeah. Just well, you don't want the, the rust to go on. My, my wife actually banned me from using cast iron in the house. because hmm. Really? Every time I cook, I just feel like, you know, you get into a zone, and you know, you forget where you're at and where you're cooking at. Next thing you know, I got the kitchen at like 150 degrees. And she's yeah. Like, Why is it so damn <laughs> hot in here? It's always so hot. I was so like, hot. babe, yeah. I'm heating the pan. I got to sear the steak. And then we're going to make the French fries in the back. And before you notice it, you're cooking like you're in a commercial kitchen. Now, what was your favorite stuff that your mom would make, both of you guys? Well, I'll give you what my grandmother would make. Okay. She used to make meatballs, and they were my favorite, but she never gave the recipe. Okay. And really? That, that, right. that really kind of upset me. So. I, I could never find a meatball like it. Uh, I got stuffed cabbage at Sarge's Deli mm, over on the okay. east side. Nice. And that's basically a meatball wrapped in, in uh, that's awesome. cabbage. And it was the same thing. And I asked them, I go, what's, what's in here? And they go, oh, there's rice in there. I go, that's, that's what was missing. She's putting rice in her meatballs. Then his wow. grandma popped up from so, behind the counter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's alive. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, uh, favorite thing my mom made um, was just rice and beans. Rice and beans. There's what makes a good rice and beans? Because it seems yeah. so simple, yet I guess you could make it a million ways. The main ingredient is love. Just taking your time and, and putting it in, you know, <laughs> building. <laughs> you get the hell out of here. Flavors? No, that's complete bullshit. Yeah. It's because Kidding you're me? a good no. chef, so you think it has to do with love. You're like, I love to cook, and I do. Some people do, and they stink it up. <laughs> my dad would put on a, a dumb apron and make food for us. I was panicked when my dad was cooking. I was just like, I mean, it was so bad. And he would watch us eat it, just like, oh, pretty good, huh? Keep going, yeah. yeah. No, he's stuck. You think it's love because you love to do it. But no. 100%. That's what people, I thought it was. Some people need directions. I looked at my uh, mom cook, and I'm like, look her. She, uh, she must love to do it. Well, if I asked her now, she'd be like, I, I will argue. hated having to cook for you guys after work all day. <laughs> you make great food, but when you're slammed on a Friday night, that's not love going into your food. That's anger, and that's yeah, why it's delicious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's Just, that flip of the coin. You know, as a chef, you got that flip of the coin. You start out, and, and, and men, you're kind of thinking about it being this nice, mm -hmm. pretty process. And then Friday night comes or Saturday night comes and you got 200 something reservations on the books and everybody comes at the same time. And there's 150 different modifications on the tickets coming in. At that point, it's just get me to my next, you know, beer after this thing. Can we get that this, sounds like Ryan's stand up set. out. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't drink beer, Lance. <laughs> it's wine. <laughs> but the chaos. I picture chefs like just the, like kitchens in this city, just like manic abuse, like deep abuse is happening. Everybody's just like sweaty and you know just blow all over everyone's nose. Just really exciting and that's, hot. That's one hundred percent what it yeah. is. I, I was I was in here probably about a month ago, just getting my ass kicked, and I was like, I gotta fucking, I gotta get a breather. I run down the block. I go to the standard to go check on Rocco, and Rocco's in the kitchen and and. <laughs> And I love it because he's, you know, there's working chefs and, and he's definitely a working chef. And I walk to the kitchen. I'm like, yo, bro, cigarette. And he looks at me <laughs> with this look on his face of like, dude, I haven't moved my feet in like three <laughs> oh, hours. Man. I was slammed and I was, I was like, all right, all right. This is, this is just what we go through. That, that did surprise me that like that you guys do these TV appearances and you're kind of like celebrity chefs, but you still got to be a chef. You still got to work. Like uh, yeah. Rocco is working yeah. in a kitchen. 100%. This is now, a guy that I was like, oh, he's on TV, but you go, he's, he's working his ass off. Yeah. But are there some chefs, so like Rocco or yourself, are there some chefs that also kind of just be like a conductor of the kitchen? They just stand back there and kind of shout, over here, over there, like that they're not really hands on, they're more just uh, conductory? I don't know if that's a chef. That might be a manager. I oh, think. okay. That's like a <laughs> okay. That's like a manager. Life. I know very little about chef. Well, because <laughs> if if you're a chef, then you're actually you know creating. Like if you go upstairs, we have a, a cup full of just plastic spoons. Yeah. Because we're tasting every single thing all day long. Wow. Oh. You know, so yeah, we're so conducting. You're taking a bite of my meal before it gets <laughs> Oh, it was delicious. That's how I knew the Son mac and cheese was a go. But it's like you got to taste everything for the consistency, mm. especially in the city because you're feeding such large masses in a yeah. short amount of time. If you fuck up one plate of rice and beans, that thing is all over you. Mm -hmm. And now if a chef comes in, Amy's husband, Chris Fisher is his name, he's a chef, but he was saying that they do this thing called food fuck you where if you go to a restaurant, especially if there's like a chef in the party, they'll just start 
sending out so much stuff where you can't even eat. Like you're just like you can barely inhale another thing. And it oh, was yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 And and he he told us because uh, my husband was he passed his chief exam, so we went out for a big dinner. It's going to be like a fire chief dinner, you know. So I was like, oh, we should go someplace real manly. We went to like city meets or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so uh, and they definitely food fucked us. Yeah, because I guess because it was wow. like a friend of his. He's like he's going to hook yeah, you well, up. Yeah, you want them just, to try everything, and it's, it's oh my god, we were just like sick, curled. Oh, but That's it was awesome. so good. Yeah. But it was just like yeah. you, it was hard to just keep. Keep eating, but I mean, it was it's, amazing. It's when you when you get your friend into your house, you kind of want to show them, you know, you show them around the house, and it's the same thing as a chef. Right. Somebody comes in, you're like, oh, you got to try every appetizer on the menu, and then every entree on the menu. <laughs> and it's for me, it's the best part of going out. You know, listen, fuck me all day with your food. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You make a song out of that. I don't know why I just looked at your computer like you were suddenly going to write something. Well, I, I tell you what, we've learned a lot today. Fuck you <laughs> with your food. And what goes into food is love and cocaine. That's a different kind of uh, Google search later. <laughs> well, we can uh, uh, catch Rachel on season two of the stand ups on Netflix. Check out her website at rachel feinstein.com. And for her stand up dates, anything else you want to plug, Rachel? Things are off the chain here at. You say La Cubana? La Cubana. La Cubana. It's blowing hookers after this, everybody. So let's go to a caller. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you want to plug anything? Listen, uh, La Cubana, come by, see us. Come get your Ruizing on. And uh, fucking keep cheating, guys. Absolutely. Outstanding, man. You can check out uh, my Instagram for these photos, RR Comedy. Uh, and uh, yeah, keep living your cheat day. Thanks for listening to the Cheat Day Show podcast. To learn more about our show, the hosts, the comedians, our guests, our chefs, and more, visit our website, thecheatdayshow.com. Also, follow along with us on our social media, at The Cheat Day Show, on Instagram and Twitter. Future episodes can be found in all the places you get your favorite podcast. Our show is also sponsored by the world-famous Comedy Cellar on McDougal Street in New York City's Greenwich Village. Visit ComedyCellar.com for show lineups happening seven days a week. Later, cheaters. <laughs>